Hi everyone, we're here in Oxford, England with Jane Shaw, our former dean, um, who is now, are, are you the president or the principal, the principal of, of Paris, Paris Manchester, Manchester College, College yep. in Oxford? It's such a prestigious position. You can see the grounds are absolutely beautiful and it gives Jane a chance to work a lot with young, young people and that yep. was part of what I wanted to ask you okay. about today. It's just, right. uh, just what are younger people thinking about these days and, well, and how, what's their spiritual life like and how are they different than, than they were maybe 30 years ago? So it's very interesting you should ask me this, Malcolm, because four of us have just written a book yes, about exactly. Generation Z or Gen Z. Yep. Gen Z, comma explained. I can do a little um, <laughs> yes, uh, plug for it. Um, and it started when uh, we were at Stanford, uh, and we started to think about how this generation, in fact, is different. Yeah. Uh, I think they care passionately about each other and other people, which is really lovely. They care passionately about the environment. Yeah. Um, they are very collaborative, um, and we try to honor that by writing, the four of us writing the book collaboratively. So it's a book by four people in one voice, which oh, was I interesting. Love that. That's great. And um, they care about um, their own mental health and well being. Um, and so, you know, a lot of people are cynical about Generation Z or Gen Z. And we were pretty positive. We think we have things to learn from them, um, which is how to be collaborative, how to care about each other and ourselves and so on in a way that they are very good at. On the other hand, we also think generations are going to work together. And so, you know, we hope that they will learn something about probably our respect for institutions yeah. that we older people have. Um, and for experience, in a way. Yeah, experience. In terms of religion, I think it's not that they're against it, it's just it's not mostly on their radar screen. Yeah, it's funny, you know, the Harvard Gazette um, published an article recently about just the health benefits of, of having a yeah. spiritual life. And, and I can, I, I, just as you were saying this, I thought, oh, that, that, that might be a conclusion that they yeah. start to come to, too, yeah. as, they, yeah. as they get older and, and start to experience different things. So here in college, actually, we have a um, well-being research center, which is fantastic, and it's run by our, one of our economists, a behavioral economist, and... He's one of the people who writes the UN Happiness Report. Oh, I love that. That's so interesting. <laughs> so they're doing a lot of research on education, the workplace, what would it mean to have a four-day four week, for example. So there's some really cutting-edge research being done just at this college on the question of well-being. And um, the director, who is this economist, gets a lot of the students to work as RAs in there, which is great. Yeah, that and is. they bring their own experience. Right, to completely. Yeah. What a great setting to be able yeah, to yeah. ask that question. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, um, Ellen Clark King was one of the first people who ever talked to me about um, cathedrals as being centers of life in today's yes. church. And she said that even though um, in many places in the Church of England you might see decline, yeah. the, the cathedrals are an exception to that. And, they are. And, and, and yes. I wonder if you can talk a little bit about why we think that yes, is. Yes, absolutely. What, what makes cathedrals effective in yeah. today's world? Yeah. So I think they're effective because they are open to uh, you know the whole city, the whole county, the whole diocese. And that means that they can serve many, many people. Um, and I tried to do that at Grace, and I know you tried to do that nice. at Grace. Um, and also I think they can bring people in by other routes, as pilgrims or through arts programs, as at Grace, through school educational programs. And there's no pressure to belong. Um, you, can, you, can, you can participate as much or as little as you like. When I was at Grace, we had Kelvin Holdsworth, who's the right. uh, Dean of the Cathedral in Glasgow, come and preach and speak at the forum. And one of the things he said, which I've never forgotten, is in cathedrals, there are big columns and pillars, P-I-L-L-A-R-S, to hide behind. Yeah. You know, so you're not going to get put on the copy rotor instantly. You can be as anonymous for as long as you like, and then you can kind of emerge. Or, as I say, you can come through a different route, at grace through yoga as well, for example. So there's, so, there's, so there's that. I think that's one of the reasons that cathedrals are successful. They also play a part in civic life in this country in yeah. particular. And one of the things that I find worrying about the Church of England at the moment, I've written about this publicly, so I'm not telling any secrets, is that cathedrals are a model for church growth, but it's not a model that the leadership in the Church of England is taking notice of. The, the leadership of the Church of England is much more interested in discipleship, which is a more evangelical model. Um, and through that, I think cathedrals and indeed parishes are getting a bit lost, which is a shame because there's a real possibility there. You know, Martin Percy talked to me about that um, mm. when we met, 
um, and it, it's hard, I think, if you're from the United States to understand just the breadth of different perspectives that are Absolutely, in the Church of England. Yeah. It is, yeah. We do cover the whole church personship, as it yeah. were, from very low evangelical to very high Anglican um, because we're the state church. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it makes it a dynamic place, and yeah. it's, it's fascinating to come and, and visit. Oh, but, good. And you've been doing cathedral tours. I'm going to turn the interview yeah, around definitely. now. Definitely, that's perfect. So, exactly. Malcolm. <laughs> Have you, have you got a favorite cathedral or? Oh, you know, that's funny. I haven't thought of it in yeah. those terms yet. But you've, um, learned, to, you've like, learned some great stuff. Yeah, I mean, you know, so um, Ely Cathedral focus, they, they film a lot of things there. So yes, we, we talked about like how they work out their media contracts. And, Interesting. you know, Westminster and that, Abbey, I met with all the visitors, like the people yes. who, you know, get, take your ticket at the cathedral. Yes. And they gave me instructions about, um, you know, if, if have a separate charge for the headphones. And, so every wow. single different place yes. we've learned like very practical things like Westminster yes. and very abstract things too. And one of the things about English cathedrals that I think is different from American cathedrals is a lot of all that outward facing stuff is done by volunteers. Yeah, yeah. And I remember, this was quite a few years ago, but I think it was Durham Cathedral, forgive me if I've got that wrong, uh, but they decided not to give the volunteers a free scone and cup of tea. Yeah total uproar because they had 80 volunteers yeah. you know and it's worth a free scar and a cup of tea you must have felt, for the kind of work yeah, they were doing you, you probably felt this way at Grace Cathedral it, there's a special vocation special yes. lay ministry yes, of absolutely. being a person of hospitality yeah, absolutely and, yeah but Grace Cathedral would not function mm -hmm. without all the volunteers that we have yeah. as greeters ushers yes. docents etc um, but it's it's such a pleasure to see you oh, and to see you in the setting you. and and, and, and uh, um, we miss you very much in California oh, you made a huge impact and we talk about that pillar anecdote all the time because of you it's like, and there are other things too that yeah. you've passed on that are part oh, of good. our DNA great well it's brilliant to have you and Heidi here yeah. fantastic and come back soon um, and I don't know when I'm going to get on play, a plane again because you know, I know. I it's know. hard to travel these it days it is but when you do we'll be delighted to see you come and preach at Grace Cathedral I'd next time you. you come thank you that would be great yeah. okay good Thanks very much for watching. Thank My you. name is uh, Malcolm Cummins Young. This is uh, Principal Jane Shaw is good. Just Jane. Just Jane. <laughs> Malcolm and Jane <laughs> from Grace Cathedral. Thanks for watching. More good news. <laughs> Bye.